This is the flag of Finland, but did you know that Finland has a second official flag with an interesting history, which is pretty much the same flag, but with a coat of arms in the middle. So in today's fun with flags video, let's take a look at the history of the Finnish flag and the Finnish coat of arms. So as I've talked about in several other videos about what happened to old flags, the Finnish story is quite interesting involving both its coat of arms and how it ended up on one, but not both of the flags. So of course, let's start by looking at some Finnish history for the symbolism behind both of these state symbols. So the Finnish flag in Finnish is called Suomenlippu, which just means the Finnish flag, as well as a more colloquial name, which is Sinnistilippu which means the blue cross flag. Now note that part of Finland also speaks Swedish and in Swedish this is called Finland's flagga which is simply Finland's flag again. So the origin or the first time when Finland really got its own flag is in 1848, a year of great rebellions such as we saw in Hungary as well as in Italy. This is when a lot of flags throughout Europe had their origin. But this flag in Finland was a little different to these other countries. Countries. It wasn't a tricolor, for example. In fact, we don't have many images of what the flag looked like, but it was described as being on a white field with laurel leaves on it. Now, at this time, Finland was part of the Russian Empire. And during this time, one of the most common symbols of Finnish identity and nationality was the coat of arms of Finland. So let's first take a look at the Finnish coat of arms and its story. So we can see that there's a lion on the Finnish coat of arms. And in my video on the older flag of Norway, we already explored a little bit of the lion iconography in Scandinavia, which was incredibly popular and probably started in Denmark. However, it soon also spread to Sweden. And throughout the 13th century, the Swedes expanded their territorial control into areas of what is today Finland as well, establishing eventually the Duchy of Finland. The Swedish kings from the House of Bielbo, who ruled from 1239 onwards, we know that they had several designs, sometimes incorporating three lions and at other times incorporating just a single lion with hearts on the background, a very similar design to the Danish royal coat of arms at various points throughout their history as well. Now, Finland got its own lion and own coat of arms during the reign of Johan III of Finland, who was also a king of Sweden, his rule starting in 1569. Now, at that time, the Duchy of Finland was somewhat separate from another duchy that was further to the east, which was called Karelia. So these two both had their own sort of coats of arms at this point point, although obviously today both are part of Finland, with Karelia being split between Russia and Finland somewhat. But what's interesting is that Finland, being ruled by those in Sweden, had a lion which had been imported probably initially from Denmark and then through Sweden and into Finland, but crucially this lion wasn't holding any weapons. However, the coat of arms of Karelia showed two arms holding two variously swords, scimitars or daggers. And what's interesting about the reign of Johann III is that these two were combined. And so we see here in the corner that what we eventually get is a lion that is holding a sword or a dagger. And this lion will change shape and the amount of weapons and the shape of the weapons as well as the shape and type of the lion will change a lot as well. But this is a modern remake of what that coat of arms is probably looked like, including several other domains that he ruled over in his capacity as King of Sweden. We can see it on the tomb of Gustavus III, for example, as we see here with the uh, very nice decoration of the Finnish lion uh, holding a sword now at that point and crucially also standing on another weapon that looks a little like a curved saber or a scimitar. Now this tomb was designed by Guillaume Boyen and as the name suggests this was not a Swede or a Finn but rather a Fleming and so Flanders also having a rich tradition of heraldic lions it's probable that he was very experienced at making lions and may also have influenced the cementing of lions as a symbol of Finland during this point. 
An important feature to note as this coat of arms developed in how it was portrayed during the 16th and 17th century is the kind of weapon that the Finnish lion is standing on, because this is actually a Russian sabre, and the reason why the Finnish lion, or, or really the Uppsala lion, as this was a, a, a Swedish lion initially, but is now being used for Finland, and the reason it's standing on a Russian sabre is because of the frequent fighting, uh, often in the territory of Finland and and beyond by the Swedish kings who were ruling Finland with the Russians as well during this period. And it is important to note how much this lion and design does shift and change. Sometimes the form changes, often there are, are nine roses in the background that we can see. Sometimes they aren't white, sometimes they're yellow, sometimes there are more than nine, as well as the position uh, changing from time to time. Now an important event in Finnish history was in 1809 when Sweden uh, lost a war against the Russians and ceded Finland to Russia and from that point on Finland would be a Russian territory and we can see here in a large coat of arms of the Russian Empire with all the other coats of arms of incorporated states that here in the corner we have the Finnish lion in the background as well. Now during the later 19th century this coat of arms continued to be used in Finland by the Russian authorities but an important development was that uh, a Finn Karl Bomb Manson decided to change back the lion shape which had started to look more and more like a dog as the 19th century moved on and restore it as part of his work with the Finnish archives to the Uppsala lion, that original lion that was being used, that Swedish lion from the Middle Ages and so to give it a more heraldic and royal feel. Now another important development is that uh, starting around the end of the 19th century and moving into the early 20th century, the Russians pursued a policy of Russification in many of their occupied territories, including in Finland. A crackdown on Finnish folklore and culture, on the language, on uh, various elements uh, of Finnish uh, style and dress, uh, but also on their symbols and identity. Now, this is a period in which the coat of arms of Finland became increasingly popular with nationalistic Finns, especially so in 1917 when of course the Russian Empire fell apart and was basically usurped by a communist uprising of the Bolsheviks. So in 1917, at the very end of the year, Finland declared its independence. And this is actually a letter of recognition by the new Bolshevik government in, in Russia acknowledging the newly found independence of Finland and you can see the stamp that has been used is indeed the uh, coat of arms of Finland with the lion with the two sabers standing on one of them holding the other and the roses in the background. But at this point Finland did not adopt this coat of arms or a flag made up of this coat of arms as its flag and instead it uses its flag a blue cross on a white background. So now seems like a good idea to look at the history behind this design. So for this we should go back to the year of 1861 and the founding of a yacht club, the Nylenska Yachtklubben, which as you might be able to tell is not Finnish but rather Swedish as this yacht club was founded in Helsinki in 1861. Now it's important to note that this founding of the Yacht Club was greatly inspired by what is probably the oldest yacht club in the world. And this yacht club is the Neva Yacht Club, which was founded uh, a little over a century before in Russia in St. Petersburg, which of course isn't too far away from Helsinki in the Northern Baltic. Now this yacht club had its own flag, which was a blue cross on a white background. Now of course in shipping flags are incredibly important and having your own flag that's recognizable at sea can mean life or death in certain situations. Noting that of course for the yacht club it was more sort of fun to have your own flag rather than needing it for it strictly defensive or to be recognizable on the sea. But this flag actually also has an interesting history in that it was based on the Russian naval jack, which as you can see is also a blue cross on a white background, the only difference being that this cross is a saltire, so a diagonal cross rather than a straight cross. 
The reason why it based its flag on the Russian naval ensign is that when the Yacht Club was founded in 1718, it was the period of Tsar Peter the Great, who greatly reformed the Russian state and indeed the Russian navy. And so they took inspiration from the Russian naval flag. It's likely also that various retired seamen and admirals probably also joined in with the Yacht Club and that may also be why they decided to go for a similar kind of flag to that that had been used in the Russian Navy. So then how did that design become the one that influenced the Finnish national flags design? Well part of the answer there might lie in the 1853 Crimean War which pit the British and the French and some allies uh, including the Ottoman Empire against the Russian Empire because of their aggression against the Ottomans. Part of this war, of course, was that Finland was now part of the Russian Empire, and so Finnish trading ships were often captured by the British and French fleets as they were officially part of an enemy empire. So to signify that these ships were from Finland and not necessarily from Russia, they decided to use a new design on their ships, and that was a blue cross on a white background. Although note that the dimensions are slightly different to the previous yacht club, it's likely that this this was some kind of variation on the Russian naval ensign, but it was used specifically by civil or merchant ships from Finland to denote that they weren't military ships. And that's where we get the 1861 design for the Yacht Club's flag from, because the, the Finnish shipping at the time, or just before, had been using similar flags on the sea. Now, 1910 is another important year for the development of the flag, as in this year, the Russification policy in Finland decided to state that all these new Finnish flags, as they started to be known because they represented Finnish ships, had to have a Russian flag in the corner. In response, many nationalistic Finns, not wanting to add a Russian flag, decided to use instead a pennant flag, which is a triangular flag, and so to take away the corner element so that they didn't have to add a Russian flag at all. But of course, in 1917, when the Finns became independent, they didn't have to worry about this anymore, and so went back to a regular rectangular flag. Although, when they did achieve their independence, the big question would be, which flag would they choose? Many designs were sent in following a competition for which flag would become the Finnish flag. Pretty much all of them either incorporated red or yellow for the colours of the coat of arms, or blue and white, the colours of this new civil flag that was already popularly used at sea. I want to show you them just because they look absolutely great and there's some absolute corkers in there. So we can see some of them here that look quite similar to flags that we find, uh, for example, around the Baltic Sea. There's some here that quite clearly uh, are um, already used as other flags, so one of them looks very similar to the Catalan flag, but I think with the coat of arms it really would have been very cool. Um, others actually incorporate that Russian flag in the corner, so perhaps some were not as anti-Russian as others had been. Some look fairly similar to the Swedish flag, others look a bit more like the Somali flag. Uh, I think this design, the one in the top right, actually is really nice and it looks a bit more like the modern Norwegian flag, but I, th I think it has a very nice aesthetic. I think it's similar to the flag of the Orland Islands or, or of Shetland. It's one of those uh, that looks really good. So I think it's a bit of a shame that uh, they haven't gone for some of these flags. But let me know in the comments below, which of these flags do you think looks nice? Do you think any of these are better than the modern Finnish flag? And should they hold another referendum? It's probably too late given the long history of the Finnish flag and fair enough. Some of these actually look a bit like the flag of Zeeland in the Netherlands too. Uh, but I think it looks pretty cool. Others have a bit more like the old Greek flag. Uh, so if you haven't seen my video on the Greek flag, then you can check that out. So I just wanted to show you those, but in 1918, the Finns decided to go for this flag, which arguably I think is one of the more boring designs, but hey ho, I'm not Finnish, so I don't really get a say. So this became the civil flag, the flag that could be flown by any Finnish citizens, whereas they also had a state or government flag, which is the same flag, but with the old coat of arms and a crown on top. Now in 1920, they decided to shift this around somewhat, they removed the crown and simply had a, a square 
uh, for the coat of arms rather than what had been the shield. They also updated the color of the uh, civil flag to be a darker blue rather than the sky blue that had been used before. Now the colors on the Finnish flag have also a certain meaning that is stipulated. So the blue on the flag is said to be for the lakes and the sky. There are many lakes in Finland so that makes sense and the white it may not surprise you to know is for the snow that covers Finland during the winter and uh, also the other seasons. So those are the colors behind the Finnish flag and that is still the Finnish civil flag today. They also still have their government flag in use by government agencies and state organizations as well. And that is the Finnish flag. So are we finished now? All right, everyone, thank you very much for watching this video on the Finnish flag and the Finnish state flag, or what I should say, really the, the coat of arms of Finland. I've really been enjoying making these flag videos lately, so there have been rather a few of them, and people seem to be watching them, so I don't really mind that. If you'd like me to cover what happened to another old flag in the comment section below, then please let me know, and I'd be happy to check out that flag's history and the symbolism behind some of the elements in another one. Check out the links in the description below. I have plenty of flags, flag videos now on uh, various flags, mostly from Europe, but I'd also like to branch out and maybe look at some other flags. For instance, I haven't really looked at any South American flags as far as I'm aware of, and I think that is a great shame because there's some interesting vexiology to discuss there. Thanks ever so much for watching. I have been Hilbert, and these have been the flags.